Hey guys, this is E with Scrapbooking with me, and today, welcome to Tuesday's Tips, Tricks, and Techniques. I know this is on Thursday, but <laughs> when you're seeing this, but we actually are behind a few days. But today, it's going to be all about mica powder. Now, I don't know how many of you have ever used mica powder, but um, I think it's a very versatile medium. You can use it in a lot of different ways. And I'm just going to show you a few ways that you can use it today. There are many, many others out there on the internet that you can check into. But today, we're just going to go over a few. Now, this is just where I did some swatches from the mica powder. And you can see how shiny and how pretty it is. And this is just on that watercolor paper that we got the other day in our kit. And then this is just a stamped image that I did. And I did some coloring in. And I don't know, on it it's a little bit harder to see the mica shine on camera. But believe me, it is very, very shiny. So that is just, you can use it as a watercolor so first we're going to use it as a watercolor. I'm just going to show you. Now I will tell you that mica powder does stain your hands up a little bit. You can wash it off with soap and water but if you're one of those that don't care to get your hands stained up you, you can use gloves. You are going to need to use a permanent ink when you're stamping an image or you can use an embossed image. But you just, just need to use something that is not going to reactivate with water. So I'm using my Memento Black. I just have this um, image here. And this is from FB Stamps. And I will try to link her website below. But she does some very, very pretty images. So I have this watercolor pad. And we have these in the shop now if you're interested. They're very inexpensive, but it is kind of a cold press watercolor. It does have a little bit of texture to it. So we're going to use this to stamp our image with. And I'm going to use just a stamp block because I'm going to need to press on this pretty hard. So this is just a piece of foam that I have. And I'll link that below. They are a stamping foam. So when you're stamping an image like this that's pretty intricate on a piece of paper that has texture, you need some cushion underneath so that it will stamp well. Now I'm going to hold that down and put some pressure on it because this is a textured paper. So your textured paper is not going to stamp as easy as just clear paper. There we go. That's a pretty good image for watercolor paper, I think. All right, we're going to let this dry. I'm going to let my ink dry completely. But I did want to show you these little pads. Like I said, we do have them in the shop. They are 119-pound um, cardstock with five. They're five by seven. You get 15 sheets in each pack. And I will link those below. But that's what I used here to stamp this image. And then I can trim that out and make a beautiful card out of it. And these are the mica powders that I got. You can see there are 60 different little pots in here. They're this size. Absolutely gorgeous. And then I also got a little spoon that I can dip these out with. So isn't that pretty? Look at some of these colors. Look at this purple. Love that. And this. So these, this will last you forever because you only use a tiny bit. I love this pearl essent one right here. That is really pretty. So I'll link these below and I have a 10% off coupon for those if anyone's interested. So what we're going to do is, while that's drying, I'm going to lay that aside and let that dry really, really well. I'm going to show you one way that you can uh, make a spray out of it. Now, this was from Color Bloom by Prima. I got this many, many years ago. There is no color left in here. That's just the stain that was in there. And it was an iris spray mist. So, all I have in here now is water. Just plain water. But I love these spray bottles, so I never throw those away. So you can see it's just water down in there. There's nothing else. 
and I'm going to mix some of this mica powder in there and this is called iris so I can remake all of these now depending on how much you put in here how strong your color is going to be I'm going to start out with about that much wash off my little spoon put the top back on that put the top of my mica powder before I spill it now I'm just going to shake it it has a little ball in there that you can shake it up now I'm just putting down some um, this is it's like tissue paper but you can use it in your journals and that kind of thing before I spray I put this down and that way it catches all the over spray and then I can use this in my art journals so let's make sure we got that mixed up really well okay you can see that I got just a very faint color in there so we're gonna put more we're going to mix up more of this. I put probably too much water in there. I should have cut back on my water a little bit. It takes very little water for this. Let's see what we get. I'm going to flip it over. And that's where I stamped the flower before. You can see we get more color. More of that iris color. And so the more that you add to this, the stronger your color is going to be. And then when this dries, you can put another layer of spray on here and just keep deepening it the more that you want. But you can still add more of this in there. As you can see, it took very little out of my bottle and I've still got plenty so you can add it in like that and you can use just a regular spray bottle to put this in just any kind of spray bottle that you have that will work you can go ahead and dry this with a heat tool or you can just let it dry on its own deli paper that's what this is called deli paper <laughs> Now I'm going to hit this with a little bit more directed mainly toward the flowers. And then we will dry that and see what that looks like. I'm going to add a little bit more. And you can keep building up your color like this or you can just go ahead and add more of your mica in your water. Just don't, when you're mixing up, don't put as much water as I did. Just put a small amount of water. That way it will mix easier and be stronger. And you can see this paper takes quite a bit of water. Doesn't bother it. And I'm going to add a little bit more just where the flowers are. You can see my color is getting stronger because I'm getting more of that water out of there. Then you can take your little brush if you want to and just pull some of that mica powder directly down on the petals. And leave it like that. Now I'm just going to see if you can see some of the mica in this. There you go. You see it? So that is just one way, and I know this looks kind of dingy right now, but I could go ahead and doctor this up, take some direct mica with my paintbrush, and pretty that up. I just wanted to show you how you could mix your mica in water and create a, a nice spray. So I'm going to take some heavy gesso, and I'm going to take my stencil, and then I'm just going to grab a green. Let's see. That looks like a pretty green right there. I'm going to take a little spatula and I'm going to put just a little bit of this out on here. I'm going to take my little spoon and I'm going to grab some of that green mica and put in there. I'm 
I have a little bowl of water over here in case you're wondering what I'm doing over that way. And then we're just going to mix this up. Now, it's better to mix this on like a plate or something like that, but I just wanted to mix it on here so I could kind of keep my surface clean for now. So we'll see how it does on here. It may not do so great. Okay, then I'm just going to take my stencil and hold it while I go over that. Holding my stencil in place. I'm sorry if my lights are flashing. It seems like they are a little bit right now. We're having some rough weather here today. And my lights are not liking it. Okay, now this is a rough application. But look at that. Was that not pretty? And I know you still cannot see that mica in there. Maybe a little bit that way. It gives just a little bit of dimension. And then when this dries, you're going to be able to see that really shine on there. So love that. I use this in my art journaling quite often. Very, very pretty. So you can mix it that way. Now, don't forget to wash your stencils off immediately. Because if this hardens on there, it's going to mess up your stencil. And that's how easy my stencil cleans up. But you can see I do all my cleaning and everything over my deli paper. That way when this dries, I can use this in my art journals. So, cleans up very easy. So that is another way that you can use it. You can also use it with modeling paste. If you want to use it with that instead of the gesso, you can do that too. All right, I think our image is completely dry. So what we're going to do is grab a couple of colors and we're going to start painting these. And we need a really pretty, let's see what we've got here. I need a pretty, this says it's raspberry red. Or we could use this one which is light plum. Or this is magenta. I think we'll use magenta. And then we need a green for the leaves. And I'm just going to do the stem in green too. That way we can have it all done. Now I'm just going to put out a little bit. And I'm just putting this out on my glass mat. If you don't have a glass mat, you can use a little bowl, a plate, anything like that. And then I've just got my paintbrush over here, and I'm going to take this brush and hopefully drop a little bit of water in here. Don't need much. I'll suck up some from over there. Drop a little bit of water in there. That's This is just a watercolor brush with a little pump on the side of it. Love that thing. Now, the only thing is... You don't really need to use the watercolor brush with this because it puts out just a little bit too much water. And you don't need that much water in this. So when you mix this up, you're going to need to mix and mix and mix until you don't see any of those little mica flakes in there anymore. The little clumps. You can also mix these up in little pots if you have any little pots. And then you can let them dry, and then you can reactivate them with water, just like a watercolor. So you can turn these into your own watercolor if you want to. Okay, that looks like pretty mixed up. So then we're just going to go to our flower and start painting. Now, 
Now, if you want to make light and dark shading, then just put a little bit more water in part of it. Water that down. And then you can go back in and you can drag it out to a lighter color. You see how the more water you add, the lighter your color gets. So you can darken it up or lighten it just depending on what you're looking for. And I mixed up way too much mica powder for this particular image. Now you can see if I want to get the center darker, then I can just pull in some of that that's not watered down quite so much. So there are our flowers. Now you can see you lose some definition when you put it pretty dark on your um, image, but you can go back in when this dries. Now I would not use a very expensive pen, but you can go back in with a maybe a fine tip black pen and add all of your definition back in. But like I said, I would not use a very expensive pen because this is mica powder and it can damage your more expensive pens. Even though it dries, there's still a little bit of that mica that can come off into your pens. Okay, and you can see I mixed up way too much, so I will use this on another project in a little bit. I'm just going to leave it right there. Or I can take my little trowel and I can scoop this up. As you see, I can scoop it up and put it over in a little pot, and then I can use that later, too. So we're just going to grab a little bit, just a tiny bit of this green, and I'm just going to tap it out like this. I don't need much. That's probably going to be enough right there. And then I'm just going to take my paintbrush right out of the water and just mix this up. Then you can just go in and start painting your leaves. When this dries, you can go back and put more um, color on here or you can put a darker color on to do shading. You can keep building up your layers. And so that is our image. Now it's not completely dry, so you're not going to be able to see a lot of that shine. But let's see if I can get it tipped to where you can see a little of it anyway. No, I just don't think it's going to. There we go. We've got a little, you got a little bit of that shine showing. So when this gets completely dry you'll see a lot more of that shine and like I said when it dries completely you can go back in with your black marker a, a inexpensive one and put back in your definition if you want to do that now if you emboss this you can use an embossing powder and emboss this image then color in the the center of it and it'll color right in the lines and it's very very pretty there you go. You can start to see a lot of that shine now. It's starting to dry. But that is another way that you can use your mica powder. This again is on this watercolor paper. So let's take, since I already got this one kind of going here, let's take just a, let's see what color we want to use. Let's use a blue. I'll show you one more way and that before we go.
and there like I said there are hundreds and hundreds of ways this is just a, a few so you can put your mica powder out on your paper like that and then you can just drop the water in And then you can start just kind of blending it out. You can let it drip down your page. You can use it this way as well to make a, create a beautiful sky. That would make a very pretty sky. If you need a little bit more, got more on my little spoon here. I think this little spoon is cute. And then you can just keep adding like that. I'm going to grab a little bit of water. I don't have any more water in my brush, I don't think. Keep blending that out until you have the sky that you want. And if you want to create a cloud here or there, just take a napkin, wad it up, and just do a couple of little taps like that, and you've got some clouds in there. So that is another way that you can use it. All right, I went back in and put some of the definition back in this flower, and I just used a little uh, RSVP cheapo pen that I got at Walmart. Just put the definition back in there, and you can see now. That I have all of my little lines and everything in there again and you can see how that's starting to shine so pretty so that is a few ways that you can use mica powder and make coloring doing art journals things like that absolutely gorgeous all right guys that is our Tuesday's tips tricks and techniques for today and if you want any of these mica powders like I said they're 60 and I think right now they I want to say they have them on sale but I, I do have a 10% off coupon that I'll leave you but um, you can go over and check those out and we will talk to you guys later thank you so much for watching bye bye